you're hanging out, the troops starting to stretch out. PTI's job to keep you now as a team together. And you see this, you look up, see that sign, it's been there forever. It's only pain, 500 meters to go. And you know it's gonna be the longest 500 meters of your life. I'm Bear Grylls, and I'm embarking on an epic journey. From the spectacular Pool Harbour, home to the Scouts, all the way along to Devon, home of the Royal Marines Commandos. Five, one, so strap in and join me as we travel along some of Britain's most stunning coastline. Okay, so one of the jobs I do that I'm most proud of in my life is to be honorary colonel to the Royal Marine Commandos, probably the finest fighting force of elite soldiers in the world. I'm down here today with two good friends, former commando and D squadron trained for SAS, uh, Phil Campion, and good buddy Scott Heffield, a former commando and a PTI physical training instructor uh, with the Marines. Behind us there, is the legendary Commando Training Centre Royal Marines at Limpston down in Devon. A place that I imagine both of you guys brings back lots of <laughs> memories, not only good but probably a few bad. I've got fond memories of that. It was tough but it was fair, you know, you got what you, you, got what you came for in there, didn't you? How old were you when you did your Commando course down here? Early 20s, yeah, very early 20s. It was 2021. Baptism by 1992. Fire. Yeah, literally, there was a guy. This is a really funny story. We had an engineer attached to us in Northern Ireland. I was a Royal Hampshire. And he was due to do his commando course. And the, the, the site major here phoned up and says, his, his private booth ready for his course. They took him on a BFT, a basic fitness test, and he failed it. And I was in the office when the site major was talking to the site major back here. And he said, I could hear him on the phone. And he says, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Private Boo has failed his BFT and he won't be able to come and join you in Limpsdale's commander course. And they said, have you got anybody who'd like to do it? And I'm like, ah, yeah, I'll do it, boss. I'll do it. And I went straight to Oakhampton and that was it, straight here. And I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was a great, great course. Well, I always think with you, the commander course opened up so much the rest of your career to then go and do SAS selection and everything that. It did. The that mindset you that you carry from here, you carry for the rest of your life. And what was the mindset here? Everything's determination, everything is, is doing, everything is doing it properly. That's one thing I'll take away from the commando course. You don't walk around stuff, you do it properly. And you do it properly and as well as you can. And that's one thing I'll never forget. And what, what, what did you come back to a place like this? It was obviously such a huge part of your life, not only when you were a young Marine going through training, but how old were you then? So I was 16 when I did commando training, not so much fun. And then came back when I was 22, 23 to be a physical training instructor. And see the other side of it, which was great, but uh, training, horrendous. Being a PTI, much nicer. So what was the feeling though when you first turned up age 16? Well, like, what were you like at that stage? Well, you don't turn up here, you turn up at the train station. So you go along the River X and the train pulls in, there's lots of other people on the train. And there's the DL standing like this with his pay stick. You know, as the train comes in, he grabs you straight away and he's lovely. Hi guys, hi fellas, welcome to Royal Marine Limpston. Well done. <laughs> welcome to CTCRM. Come on over here, Go, grab your bags. Come on, follow me up the hill. But that's about the end of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All goes pretty self after so that. So were you like wide-eyed at that point? Oh yeah. And you go down to the, what was then the induction uh, centre and uh, you know they cut all your hair off and you're all down to this equal level and then it, it starts. I, get, I have such strong memory coming from mm. my potential officers course A16 pulling up on that thing you can recognise everyone else on the train who's also destined for there and their sort of blazer and everything. That's right and of course you see the first thing you see is that bottom field which you all know really well you know so you see the bottom field the assault course thing. One of the funny things I remember doing was coming back with the first time I met you down here and we went down to the bottom field and I'm walking on the bottom field. With the, and you're like, you don't, you don't walk anywhere in that camp, do you? You know what I mean? On the and, I'm, field. and the Colonel's there. Colonel, Mike Tanner's Who's there. Done that? Mike Tanner's like that. Well, big man. Mike Tanner's walking. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like doing this hop, funny hop skip thing behind him. Like, I'm not walking, boss. I'm not walking, honestly. <laughs> just couldn't walk on that bottom field. I'm like, they'll just do me skippy thing instead. Brilliant. And it's, it's funny because if you ever get a PTI, Scott then came back to PTI, but if they ever offer you to say, you know, do you we're going to do a comprehensive warm-up, and you think, well, that'd be the warm-up. 45 minutes later, a farmer's carries and crawling. And my, the last one I did down here was only a couple of years ago, and after the warm-up, I was a wreck, you know. <laughs> when you came back to PTI, you are at the maximum point of your power, aren't you? Well, you, you're as fit as you've ever been, you're as strong as you've ever been, but also your job then is to help others. It, it's hard, super tough, but you're fair, and I think people appreciate that. And, um, but I mean, you know, you get respect as well. I remember taking them for a run. We went for like a casual run, week 20, with my, one of my recruit troops. So come on, let's go for a run. I thought I'm going to beast him. I'm a good runner. So I took the whole troop and gradually they all faded away. 
clubs out front, you know, PTI. Eh, eh. As we speeded up, in fact, we came down this last lane, I started getting faster and faster. There was this young lad on my shoulder. So I thought, right, I'm really, you know, PTI. Started really opening the pace up, we just there the whole time on my shoulder. Like this. And he wasn't even, I was like, ah, ah. But as we finished here on this line, I obviously came first, but he wasn't breathing hard at all. And that, that was all a bit of respect. I found out later he was an international runner. Oh, wow. And he was like yeah. a 1500 meter schoolboy champion. And he just stayed behind me on my shoulder, you know. Well, good job he did. Are, good always, job he did sit on my shoulder. There's always someone fitter and stronger. Longer, isn't exactly, it? exactly. But what would you say the values that you try to instill in young Marines as a PTI? Because I, certainly I remember any PTIs I've had in my life, especially in the earlier, were like such iconic people where you looked up to them so much and you kind of wanted to be like them. Well, you know, it was honesty and integrity, of course it was. And even when you're doing circuit training or when you were, I remember getting the recruits to sprint to a line and back, you know, and actually if they didn't meet the line, then they, they, you know, they end up in the tank. And it's that, that honesty, that, the, the rough edges of the honesty. But so also, what, is, what is the tank? We, had this, we, we designed this lovely outdoor swimming pool. It was wonderful, really, really nice. It wasn't, it wasn't heated, <laughs> concrete, <laughs> rather steep. And uh, obviously- Na Natural color. Natural, natural color, color, sort of greenish. But you know, if you were to make a mistake, perhaps you weren't working as hard as you should have, or you needed some development Training, <laughs> some character, some character training. Some then they put people activity. in the tank in those days, and usually, obviously, January, February, March, it was ice cold. But and also, there was always that dry sense of humour, though. But well, also, it's the humour in adversity. It's actually not just being a joker and laughing all the time, but actually, when it's cold, when it's wet, when you're hungry, when you've been on exercise for weeks on it, whatever it is, just to smile and just to laugh and still have a joke. Well, the commando qualities, as these guys know, of courage, determination cheerfulness and adversity, that ability. Anyone can have a good time when it's all going well, but you learn about people when you're tired and cold, whether you're up a mountain or whether you're on Woodbury Common over there or in the camp. And then finally, a selflessness, that ability to put other people first. And those four qualities are something that are drummed into you from day one in this camp. You're always about you know, looking out for your oppo. Selflessness, uh, cheerfulness and adversity, courage, determination. Uh, we're going to go uh, a mile down here and we're going to yomp, or, uh, which kind of speed march mix of speed march and running the last mile into camp. Uh, Scotty, just tell us about this lane and the name of this lane. Well, almost every, every run that you do or speed march finishes here at Heartbreak Lane. So you know when you turn out of Woodby Common, where most of the training is at Woodby Common, you hit this lane, you know you're you know, a mile or two from home, it's very close. And then halfway down, there's a surprise to help motivate you and you, you know it's not far to go, that last little push. Well, we're gonna do the last bit. We're gonna to go to the place that is a surprise and then we're gonna finish back here. Ready? Great. Okay. okay, here we go. We better get in step, first of all. The trouble is with the old uh, Royal Marine pace, it was quite fast. The walking was almost as bad as the running. You remember this, Phil, don't you? I do remember this, you yeah. Remember it. And every single, well, almost every single run or speed march or low carry was finished back at Heartbreak Lane down here. Uh, about a mile or so from the main road then. You knew Limpston was just up there. This is the last bit. You've been on exercise for 10 days, 18 days, whatever it is. You've run four miles, six miles, eight miles, 10 miles, whatever you've done. And this is the last bit. You're probably carrying 30 pound of webbing. That's equipment with all your ammunition and food and your weapon. That's another nine pound, the old SLR in those days, Phil. Yeah. Uh, or you're carrying all your kits and maybe closer to 60, 70, 80 pound of kit. But it doesn't matter. It's still the same. The PTI is where I am now. The right hand mark is there, usually a Royal Marine instructor, PTI or PW, and he's keeping the pace and keeping the cadence and helping you get along. It's his voice that motivates you and it's not shouting as in, come on back yourself. It's motivational in the way that he talks. So, and is just, this, I reckon this is, is it good pace? This is and it, then, this is perfect I, pace. I always remember it was a mix, so then we'd be running for a bit and then it would be back to the. the so you do about seven, seven minutes running and about three or four minutes. Uh, walking, 10 minute miles, but that might change if you're uphill or downhill, and uh, you just keep this cadence. So when you're walk, walking like this, it's just left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And it is a fast walking pace. You would break into double time, double, and on the word march, we go into this pace of running. It's actually not much faster than this. It's short and sharp. So we go left, right, left, right, break into double time. Double, march, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Break into quick time. Quick march. Straight back into it again. 
And it's that classic voice, isn't it, where, as you say, it's not shouting. Well, it's sort of like, well, that's it. There we go. Short and sharp, but it is hard, and so the running is only marginally faster than the walking. Yeah. And you're hanging out, the troops starting to stretch out. PTI's job to keep you now as a team together. And you see this, you look up, and the PTI brings it to your attention. You see that sign, it's been there forever. It's only pain. 500 meters to go and you know it's going to be the longest 500 meters of your life. Break in a double time, the ball, march, one, two, three, four, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, one, two, three, four, break in a quick time, quick march and then back into it again. And uh, so talk us through actually what the commando tests are that the Marines have to do at the end of their 32 weeks at that camp that we can just get the first view of now on the horizon. At the end of that 32 weeks, we have to do that week of commando tests, of Please. which this lane obviously features at the end of a few of them. So talk me through what they are. Well, you've just come, first of all, it's not just the commando test. You've just come off the longest, hardest exercise. 10 days it used to be in those days. Yomping, 10 miles, 12 miles, 20 miles with full kit. You've hardly eaten, you've hardly slept, your body's run down, you're probably the weakest you've ever been in your life, and suddenly, the next day, you embark on the commando test, one after the other. So you're not fresh, you're not recovered, you're not an athlete, you're super tired and run down, and now you have to dig deep and go for the commando test. So, you've got the nine mile speed march. You think it's quite easy, but your body's in bits, you do the nine mile speed march at the end of the speed march. But you're carrying, carrying weight, you're carrying, carrying all your full pound, kit. Weapon webbing. The end of all that. Around Woodbury Common with all the tunnels, all yep. of that. And then you, you do your speed march, you do a section attack. Then you've got the endurance course. The endurance course you. So the speed march finishes down here. So down that's here, one of them done. That's one. And then you've got uh, the endurance course. We actually walk four miles to the start of the endurance course. It's not even time that, it's just like get yourself to the start of the endurance course. You've got the endurance course, which is water tunnels, the sheep dip, big lakes to cross, and then you run all the way back and the finish is not here either. You come down this lane, into camp, right to the bottom field where you have to fire your weapon. That's and then right, yeah. Still 10 rounds, yeah. get you've got, you've got to get the most of a group, aren't you? Exactly. <laughs> and then, of course, You've got the Tarzan Assault Course, which is the Assault Course, followed immediately by the Tarzan Course, which is high up in the trees. And all of this is done on the same day? This is done one day, next day, next day, next day. So you get it one day, you don't have any rest, you lead straight into them after you've done your uh, final exercise. And then the last one, the big boy, the finish, where you're going to see the Colonel, who's going to award you that coveted Greenberry, is of course the 30 miler. 30 miles across Dartmoor, eight hours, full kit, at the end of it, if you're successful, you get handed that coveted green berry. It's the end of 32 weeks of one of the hardest training courses in the world. Sorry, the hardest. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. <laughs> and here's the finish. Here's there the end go. of Heartbreak Lane right here. PTI here with his stopwatch. And if you're still in the troop, if you're still with the team, you pass. So once yeah. you get to about week 20, you start the commando phase. You've got all the bottom, the bottom field tests. So you've got the, the, uh, the 30 foot rope climb in full kit. You've got the assault course under five minutes. You've got the, uh, the 200 meter farmer's carry. Horrendous, horrendous, horrendous 200 meter That's farmer's carry in 90 me. seconds, <laughs> carrying your partner and his kit and his weapon. And then the dreaded regain, which mate, you've made famous really all over the world now. Crawling across that rope, upside down, full regain, back on the rope, and hopefully missing out the drop into the tank. So there you go, summary of the commando test. And, uh, that's a little bit about what it takes to earn that coveted green berry for young Marines. But for you guys being back here, what would you say to a young guy embarking on life who's thinking, I'd love to join the military, where do I join? I'm physical, I love the, the, love the outdoors. But I sometimes, and I come across this a lot, I don't know if you do, but people are, I just don't feel I could ever, I'm about ever be strong enough to complete Commando Training Centre down at Limpson. I'll join something, I'll join the army, I'll join the infantry. The Marines sometimes can have such a, you know, it can, such a, uh, what do you call it? A kind of a- it's like an aura. Aura about yeah. it. What would you say to a young person saying, you're saying that? You're gonna meet 
amazing people. You're going to build friendships that last forever. On my phone now, I've got this new group, 300. My troop is 300, the mighty 300. 36 years ago, yeah. and 12 of us are still keeping in contact. There was only 15 or 16 of us that passed out of training. You'll make friends for life. You'll learn skills that no one else can do. And you'll build this ethos this of family values and friendship like, like nothing else can do, in my opinion. Yeah, you've just got to go for it. You've got to go for it. You've got to decide that you're going. And if you can make that decision, you're probably what they're looking for anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you've got to, it's a combat indicator, that one, isn't it? You know, if you can make that decision, I'm going for it, I'm going for it. And also that would be the worst thing for me, is if I reached the age that I am now, and I looked around and said, well, I didn't go for it. Yeah. Whether I'd passed yeah. or failed, and I have failed a few things in my life. Yeah. Okay, but at least I had to go for it. Fear holds so many people back, I think. And I always remember my granddad saying, most people regret the things they didn't do in life rather than things they did absolutely, do. You know? Absolutely true, not true word spoken, because yeah. you know, you'll get time to reflect on it and you think to yourself, what could have been? So whether you've come through Commando Training Centre down here and joined the Marines, or whether you've completed 22 SAS selection, or you know, for me with 21 SAS selection, I think the, the ethos is the same. As you say, it's about the friendships. It's about that sense of family and camaraderie and a, a sort of quiet pride inside that, that you've done it, you know? And, it wasn't always perfect. You fell down a lot and you failed a lot, but you got back on your feet. And certainly, I failed selection first time, you know, but actually I look at the, when I passed the second time round, out of the four of us that passed it, out of the odd 90 that started, three had failed first time as well. It's like, you know, so much life, you've got to go no, through the no failures, haven't failure. you? There's no shame in failure. Well, you've got to go through the failures. It's a doorway, you know, to anything in life. If you want to reach your meaningful stuff, you're going to have to, you're going to have to fall down a few times. But, but I think the ethos here, the ethos of the regiment. That's where David Sterling's first ethos, the unrelenting pursuit of X, doesn't take into consideration failing or passing. Yeah. Just so long as you keep going, doing the best you can. Yeah. That's that's number one. Just keep going. Just keep whatever it is you want to do. Set your sight and go for it. And keep. Don't rest yeah. on your laurels. Oh, I passed this. I don't need to bother anymore. Do you know what I mean? There you go. I've got my lid. I'm off. No. Get on to the next challenge. Get, achieve the next thing in your life. Yeah. And keep going. It's unrelented. The only real failure is giving up. So there you go, thank you you guys for your time, legends one and all, come on, if you're a young guy, I uh, think you've joined the military, you will not find a more amazing family than the Commando family down here at Livingston. Phil, you got any ivy profile? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need a proof. <laughs>